In lesson 2.9, we're going to take all of our percent knowledge and we're going to apply it to real life situations. So these are applications of percents. Definitely a calculator lesson. Um, just about every single problem uses your calculator. So date goes over there and we'll get started. Um, in this lesson, there's four or five different ideas and they all involve a quick little formula. So we're just gonna put these formulas all in our notes and then the follow-up videos will go through examples of each one. So this intro video will just give you the formulas to get you set for the examples coming up. So first thing is commission. Um, commission is you might have a job where you can earn a commission. For example, a lot of sales jobs, you might earn a certain percentage of your sales and it's extra money that you can um, that you can add on top of your salary. Another job that has a commission is realtors. Realtors, that's kind of the only way that they make money. They get a percent of the sale, usually around three and a half percent of the sale of their homes. So, to find a commission, you do two things. Well, you don't. You do one thing. You take the percent. So they'll give you the commission percent. Let's make a note that this is as a decimal. So if they tell you that the commission percent is 4%, we're going to take that and turn it into a decimal and use 0 0.04. So that's very important. And all you do is you multiply it by the sales. So a commission problem will give you the commission percent and the sales value and you just multiply them together. Simple interest, um, this is simple interest you can earn. Think of a savings account. If you are, um, if you put money into a savings account, let's say you put $100 into an account, you can earn interest on the account. So if you want to know how much interest will I have in two years, you can use this formula for simple interest. So I equals PRT. I stands for the simple interest that you earn on the account. And we're getting some banking and finance terms in here, so we'll want to make some notes. Um, P is the principal. Principal is going to be your deposit. How much money did you put in? Some of these problems have to do with an investment, too. So it's your deposit or your investment. Maybe you're investing money into something that will earn interest. So whatever the deposit or the investment is, that's a principal. The R is your rate, and important to know on that one, it is as a decimal also. So for example, you know, if they said that the rate was 1.5%, that's on the lower side, but our rates tend to be kind of small. When you move that decimal two spots to the left, you're going to get a 0 0.015. So that's just an example of what a rate might look like. And you would want to use that decimal versus the 1.5. All right, and the last thing is time. Time, another thing to note, important that it's in years. So it might be, let's leave this money for two years and see where we're at. The one thing to look out for is if the problem gives you time in months. So let's say that you have, I don't know, four months, and you have to answer the question using four months. Anytime you're giving a month measurement, all you have to do is take the months and divide it by 12 and that will turn it into years. So in years, if it's given to you, if you're given months, just put it over 12, and that will turn it into years for you. All right, so tax, we're taxed on everything um, in this country. And so to find tax, it's just another simple multiplication. Tax, you take the tax percent, so that's as a decimal. All these percents we turn into decimals. And then you're just going to multiply it by your total bill. You'll want to see what the question is asking you to do. If it says, hey, what's the tax? That's, that's all you do, just that simple multiplication right there. Just take the um, tax percent as a decimal and multiply it by the total. If they're asking for the final cost with the tax, so tax is something extra that we pay. So that's why you take your total bill, whatever it might be, whether it's, you know, the cost of a shirt at a store, and you add the tax to it to get your total. So tax is an extra thing we pay, which is why we add the tax to our total in the end. So just see what they're asking you to do. If they're asking for a final, we just add in 
in our last in our final answer there. All right, so discount. We love discounts. Anytime you go shopping, try to find a sale. Um, so the discount will be, you know, take twenty percent off. So if you the to figure out what the discount is, you take the discount percent. So if it was twenty percent. Again, we're going to turn it into a decimal, 0 0.20, so that percent's always as a decimal. You multiply it by the total cost of whatever the item is, and that tells you how much you can take off from the total. So what is the discount? You just multiply the decimal percent times the total, and then the sale price will tell you what you actually have to pay for the item. Now, if something is on sale and there's a discount, that means you don't pay as much, you get to pay less, which is why we take the original price and we subtract the discount. So, you know, a lot of these problems are pretty logical. You know, if you say, hey, there's a discount, that means that you get to subtract that out of the total. All right, so tip, if you guys are dining out, um, it's nice to tip your server, whether or not you are paying for your bills yet is another thing. Um, so tip, again, there's that multiplication. In this chapter, when in doubt, multiply, and that will get you on the right track. So percent, you won't be surprised when I say as a decimal, again, just multiply it by the total. Um, a standard tip is 15%. If you want to be nice, and it's a little bit easier math to do, try to give a 20% tip. So that's what I try to do. Now your final bill, because a tip is something extra that you're paying for the wonderful service that you had, you take your total food bill and you add the tip in. So tip is an extra thing you pay, so it gets added on top. All right, last slide. There's this thing called a 10% rule. This is very, very helpful. It's just a little trick to to keep in mind if you ever need it. Um, I do this all the time for finding a tip. I do this when I'm trying to figure out a discount when I'm shopping for clothes. Um, and it just kind of gives you an estimate of things. So to find the 10% rule, you move the decimal one place to the left. So let's say I want to know what is 10% of 250. Well, right now, the decimal is here at the end, 250. If I want to know what 10% is, I would move it one spot to the left, and I know that that gives me 25. So it's a really quick thing you can do in your head. Um, let me give you a quick example. Let's say I had a food bill for $20, and I want to leave a tip. In my head, I can come up with a 20% tip faster than I can come up with a 15% tip. So I would say, well, what's 10% of 20? I would just move my decimal one spot to the left and I'd say, oh, that's $2. Well, if I'm leaving a 20% tip, let me think of another 10% would be another $2, and I just double my 10%. So basically, I'm looking at a $4 tip. So using the 10% rule twice, or I used it once and doubled it in my head, I know how much I should tip um, my server. So the total then would be the $20 plus the $4 tip, and I would have $24. So just a handy little thing anytime you need a quick 10%, just move the decimal one spot to the left.